All right. All right. All right. Fine. I'll be a gracious host. How you doing? Little Mermaid is the scariest Disney movie by far, though. Why the hell is Ace Blade in your Kickstarter? <laughs> Some comics we're gonna i'm getting controversial today we're gonna get controversial today with with my my proudest moment is this interview and being able to talk to you too <laughs> ladies and gentlemen boys and girls children of all ages taurus comics in collaboration with what i wasn't gonna do it <laughs> what <laughs> I was not going to do it. I was not going to do it to you this week. Yeah, I know. We got no more beam for the rest of the year. I was I, I was not going to rub it in because I was rooting for y'all. I was rooting for y'all. We're all rooting for y'all. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm sorry, man. I, I wanted to see the Kings in the, in the playoffs, and it just didn't go that way. So <sighs> when I see Fish in the comics, Fish, my plans, unfortunately, like we talked about, aren't going to happen now because of this. That's yeah, all right. we had we had something planned, him and I. So, all, all right. right, can I can I can I start the show properly? Please, I I was I tried not to interrupt you. I didn't even want to make the face. I you didn't make it make such a face. bad face, though. It just happened. I'm sorry, because I did think about it, but I was like, no, don't do it. <laughs> Go ahead, in, intro the show, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm so disappointed now. Damn it, <laughs> I can't even do this. <laughs> Children of all ages, Taurus Comics and something, something collaboration with Fourth Wall Productions respectfully brings to you the 112th episode of the Four Tales podcast. I am your very disappointed host, Kyra Silva from Taurus Comics. Across this way is the purple para- paragrapher of Ace Blade, Danny J. Quick, and together we're your two award-winning blurred comic creators here to help you find your next favorite comic. We are live on the Age of the Geekdom Network via Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. And apparently TikTok again today. So if you no, no TikTok. Okay. Yes, TikTok. I was oh, telling right. my son not to take my charger. Oh, don't be taking people's chargers, DJ. Uh, so if you're listening or watching us live, thank you for your support. But don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and review this podcast because all your positive reviews, interactions help us reach a bigger audience. This, this is right though. This yes. this twelve o'clock time is very inconvenient to me. I was already up this morning <laughs> doing stuff. I would. I liked it better when it was ten o'clock for me, and I could just get up in the morning and get ready for the show before I had to do it. I had to go ahead and send the kids to do laundry. I'm up cleaning. I ate breakfast, Mm -hmm. and now I had to come back over here and sit down. Season season five, we're going back to ten (laughs) o'clock. We ain't never going back to ten o'clock. Screw that. (laughs) Never gonna happen. We ain't never going to happen. No, you, you better get used to it. Fine. This is a great way for you to be productive is what you're telling me. No, I was still productive. I just didn't have to stop production to come be more productive. Shoot. We ain't never going back. I'm sorry. What you fish. Shoot. This, this noon thing is, is for the birds. But no, it's good. I've, I, got, I always have my quick takes in early now. Yeah, you no. Know, actually, have more time to do some discovery, some deep dives on our guests. So, mm-hmm. oh, no, it's good. Yeah. All right, cool. So, do you want to bring that guest on then? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have a young legend in the game. Uh, I want to say, Mister Andre Owen has been in comics for twenty plus years now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, um, you know, we're we're happy to have you on the show. Thank you for being with us, Andre. Thanks uh, for having me. For the folks that uh, who might not be familiar with your work, give us a, a quick overview of your time in comics and what you're working on now. Okay, well, so I've been doing comics now for a long time, like you said, over 20 years. I wrote my first comic back in 1998, of all things. I was living as, I was working as a cinematographer and, um, you know, shooting music videos and commercials and feature films and you know, political commercials, all those kind of stuff. But when you're when you're a cinematographer, you're not doing things things that are created for yourself. You know what I mean? You're working for someone else's vision. It's much like being an artist in in the in, in comics. Um, so you know, I had all these ideas I wanted to do, but it's like, well, I can't make feature films out of these, you know, these fantastical fantasy ideas. So I decided, well, I love comics. Let me write a comic. So that's exactly how I started. So I wrote my first book, was Force Galaxia, 
which is a sci-fi superhero anthology book that has three different stories in it. So that was the first book I wrote. And I find it took me about uh, eight years to publish it from the when I first wrote it to when I first published in 2006. Um, so I did that. And I've had over the years, I've published a whole lot of different books. Uh, one called The Stone Age is an autobiographical book about a uh, bong store. I worked out of Melrose in the late 90s and all mm. the you know, crazy characters would come in there. I write The Sisters of Power about an all women's detective agency on Earth's rebellious moon. I write that with a partner, uh, John Crosby out of Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I do Hero Unlimited One Shot, which is a um, like quarter, sort of like my old Marvel two in one, where it's you know one two di um, two different characters that are usually not together, but they're in my universe, and I try to find uh, combine a new artist with a new writer or vice versa. So I do that. Uh, the book that I'm most thrilled about writing though is the Bovine League mm -hmm. about two the altered superpowered cows from Switzerland. So that that book is so much fun because I can write you know throw any trope I want in there, any kind of cow pun. You know, it's 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 just delicious fun to write. And the last book I've done that just came out last year is a 230-page graphic novel, Omega Chronicles. So this is a this took me about 20 years to make because you, as you can imagine, you know, not being an artist, I had to pay artists for all of that. So that's um all the things I'm doing up to this date. Um, I've got other uh, new things planned. Bovine League number two. I tried to do a Kickstarter, wasn't successful, but I'm continuing to to produce that. Um, I started Omega Wars, which is a sequel to Omega Chronicles. And mm -hmm. I've got a, um, a, um, a, uh, an, uh, an encyclopedia coming out this year of my universe called Briscoe Savoy's Galactic Facts. Okay. Okay. Now, the Omega Chronicles is the, the one that was nominated for the Glyph Award, right? Yeah, it was nominated for Best Artist, yes. The artist, uh, Max Bar Bertolini, the, uh, the cover artist, uh, Ruli Akbar, Rodolfo Hernandez, and um, Gabe Pena are all, all internal, um, you know, interior artists. And they were nominated for the Glyph Award, which I'm very, very proud of. I love it. I love it, man. You've been you've been around the the comic game for a long time, like you said. Yeah. Right? Um. I wonder did did your your work in cinematography, you know, help or hurt your you know creative, um, vision for for comics? Have you have you, um, I would imagine you know like you just said you're not being able to do your own stuff, um, may have you know made you focus more on on your creative output, but maybe. You know, it jaded you a little bit from working with other people. So I, I wonder how did it help or hurt? It actually helped quite a bit. You know, when you're work, when you're working in film, you know, it's so collaborative. And especially when you're a DP, you know, you're a cinematographer, everything's about lighting and the camera angles and, the, and those kind of things. So um it very it translated very easily for me actually from going from cinematography to writing comics because you know you're working almost in the same type of medium, you know, a lot of and, you know, I know a lot of people think comics are, are, are just like storyboards, even though it's a, it's a completely different animal, right. um, but they are related. So it's something that you can, you know, easily transfer, um, transfer to, you know, either medium for me, at least, um, you know, and as a cinematographer, you know, I think I think visually and for comics, you know, comics are such a visual medium. It really helps, um, you know, uh, get the point across you know, for me to be to be able to visualize right. um, that kind of thing and get the point across to the artist. Yeah, nice. Now, with your history in cinematography, um, have you considered or thought about maybe taking your your IPs and turning them into your own feature films? Well, it's interesting. I I I don't make comics for um, with the idea of making it into films. It's not the reason I'm into comics. I make comics because I love comics, you mm -hmm. know. And if mm -hmm. now if if, if if the opportunity comes and uh, someone wants to, you know, I get an IP of one of my comics and actually turn it into you know a TV show or feature film, that would be great. You know, I think the Bovine League would make a wonderful animated uh, series. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, uh, you know, they're genetically all the superpowered cows from Switzerland. So, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, 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 it would make a perfect uh, animated series, but I don't write with the intention of uh, doing it that way. Now I'm a screenwriter in my other life also. So I've sold screenplays to Hollywood, but um, you know, the intention of my comics was really just to make comics. Nice. How do you balance that? Uh, you know, doing the comics with a lot of us want to make that a full time job, but then you also have your own full time job. How do you balance that? That well, uh, the two sides. Uh, look, you know, uh, being a screenwriter isn't. I mean, it, it can be lucrative when you sell something, but there's a lot, a lot of years where you're not. So it's not exactly the most lucrative business you you know you can get into. And you know, and of course, you guys know comics is aren't, aren't you know the the most lucrative business either. Um, so uh, for me, write the writing process. Uh, uh, is you know like most writers, it involves a lot of thinking. You know, a lot of a lot of in my own head and deciding what'll work. You know, and some ideas I have, I think will work better for the screen, and some will work better for comics. Mm, nice. Okay. 
I love it. I love it. The um, so I wonder. I we we see a lot of like uh, <laughs> when we talk about bovine league. I think bovine league was the first uh, one of your projects that I saw. Okay. And uh, I know we see a lot of um, a lot of like properties with animal. You know, yeah. more, more you see, you got Ninja Turtles. We got Battle Toads. What right. made, what made you pick? uh cows and bulls like what was <laughs> what made you you lean towards the bovines okay well can, so, add, on, wait, can I add on to that yeah. what made you pick switzerland okay so everywhere <laughs> those, those are all tied together so 20 years ago or so i was on vacation in europe and i went to switzerland and i was in geneva with my ex-wife and her or her parents we're having a wonderful time you know just i'm touring around europe it's like i've never been there so you know it's very exciting um so i was buying different gifts in different places i was at so in geneva i went into a store and i bought a coffee mug you know i'd like i drink coffee and on the coffee mug it had every canton or state within switzerland represented by a cow and they had the, the canton's colors on that cow you know like green and blue or whatever the colors would be for that canton and, you know, they had the name. So I didn't think anything of it. You know, I you know went on my vacation, you know, flew, jammed around Europe, came back to America, came back to L.A. And one day I was just sitting there drinking coffee. And I looked in the mug and I was like, huh, that's a good idea. So literally it was from a coffee mug where it was. So each so none of the, the characters in, my, in the bovine, they were named after the canton. So much like if someone in Switzerland made a uh, comic about the United States, they would call a character California or, you know, Idaho. Mm -hmm. So I can't recall characters like, Geneva or Zurich, you know, they're named after the city that they represent. So really, it, it really, it really just came from vacation and it literally came from a coffee mug. Oh, wow. You yeah. never, you never know where inspiration will come from. It's so like, true. I think, I think that's one of the great things about creating. Like I, even with, um, you know, TikTok and stuff, I always get a, a random, I'll get a random idea for some, from some random thing that I saw during the day. And then I'll have an idea or, 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 you know, have an inspiration of why it's funny to me and want to share it with people. Like, right. I mean, that's one of the best things about um, creating. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I really enjoy a TikTok too for that, for that reason, because, you know, when an idea pops in my head, you know, mm -hmm. you can just go with it right away and you get an audience that's built in there. So, you know, I, I really enjoy using that platform. I hope they do not, uh, you know, kick us out from the United yeah. States. So, yeah. Yeah. Now you're mentioning is taking you uh, many years at this point to uh, get Omega Chronicles together. Um, yeah. Uh, most of it that, like we said, is because of financing. What ways are you using to finance your books at this point? So for Omega Chronicles, I've been working on it so long. I financed most of it out of my own pocket. That's why it took me wow. 20 years to make it. You know, um, I ran a I ran a small Kickstarter uh, last year, but only for like a thousand dollars. I was just trying to get some fans, you know, to build a fan base for the book and be able to print books. So I did a small Kickstarter, but most of it literally has come out of my pocket, you know, for the last 20 years. Um, you know, and it's, you know, I mean, I probably spent thirty thousand dollars on this book, you know, to get it produced, you know, over the years. Um, so it's you know, it's definitely a labor of love. It's my, you know, it's like kind of my life's work, you know. Um, and I'm and I'm very proud of it. I'm thrilled with it. I mean, it features characters that I created when I was a child. You know, like much like a lot of creative people in the in the comic industry, a lot of my characters I created when I was, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, and I've just simply updated them for you know a modern audience. I love it. I love it. Well, the creation, the creative process is, uh, you know, you were talking about collaborate collaborations earlier. Um, I think we all are a part of a, a recent collaborative effort. Um, we've been talking about talking with a bunch of creators um, from the Epiphany Engine project. Oh, yes. Which which one of your characters or which ones of your characters are going to be uh, included in that? Well, we're, you know, I'm thrilled about the Epiphany, the Epiphany Engine, because that's a it's a um, collaborative thing of uh, indie black creators. And there's over 40 of us publishers involved. Um, mm -hmm. The character that I will have is my character from Omega Chronicles, Francisco the Super Green. Now, he hates that name because, he, you know, it's, it was a, it was stuck on me. One of the trope, one of the um, uh, jokes that I have throughout the, the Omega Chronicles is him, people call him the Super Green. And he's always just fuming and saying, no, my name is Francisco. So <laughs> it's just it's one of those ironic things. But. He's the character is definitely going to be um, you know, definitely going to be uh, uh, in the uh, Epiphany engine. And I'm thrilled about that. That's going to be uh, such an exciting thing that's happening, you know, in the indie comic world. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what information do you have about the Epiphany engine that you can maybe share with us? Um, well, I can tell I tell you what, I can tell you um, some of the writers involved that we have. We, got, we have uh, about eight writers in the gumbo um, involved. And it goes from every from Brandon Thomas 
to Greg Burham, mm-hmm. to Robert Jeffrey, uh, to Lonzo Starr, um, Colleen Douglas, I believe, is involved, uh, uh, Rodney Barnes, of all people, and um, mm-hmm. I believe Alvern Ball. That's another one of the writers. I don't think we've announced the artists yet beyond, uh, I believe, Stanley Weaver uh, is involved, um, Sean Hill is mm-hmm. involved, and I think Chris Cross may be doing something for us. So that's mm-hmm. that's all I know right now, you know, from, from my end. We're running a Kickstarter. It's going to be on Juneteenth for Epiphany mm-hmm. Engine, so please look out for that. You know, we're we're looking to raise a you know, nice chunk of change to get this book done. I believe we're planning a 180 page graphic novel. So it's gonna be it's gonna be the important in the, the 2025, it will be the book or 20, yeah, 2025. Yeah, I think it'll be the book that'll come out. Okay. Right. I'm looking forward to it. I I, yeah, I I am too. I think it's gonna be really exciting. You know, it's one of those things where you know, and talk about collaboration. It's one of those things where you know, as a creator, you have to. And I know, I know some people may not be comfortable with this, but you have to let your baby go and let other people, you know, put their spin on your character. I will, I will say that I think that as far as collaborations go, the 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 uh, survey that uh, I received for Ace Blade to to fill out for them to write about Ace Blade was very uh, extensive. <laughs> it, yeah. Was, yeah. it was very extensive. They wanted to know, they wanted to know Ace Blade's favorite color. They wanted to know is what he you likes put to green eat. for that, right? What he likes to yeah, green. Uh, what he likes to eat. Uh, what 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 his uh, his st- like if he has any stereotypes. If he has any, you know, there were there were all kinds of stuff they were asking. So I'm 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 hoping that you know everybody is able to fill those out and we'll get some really um, deep. Um, I'm sure a lot of the stuff will be surface level. A lot of yeah. you know one shots and you know uh, punch lines and stuff like that. But you know, I, I'm yeah. I'm excited about it. I am too. I, I, mean, of I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be such a cool thing, you know. I mean, with all the great writers involved and you know, tons of characters. I didn't even know your your character Ace Blade was involved in it. So that's mm-hmm. that's even more exciting. So yeah, Kyron's got Kyron. Which one of your characters are in? Uh, my understanding is Ruby is going to be in that. Oh, nice. So yeah. now I'm I'm excited because just the amount of creators that we have that's going to be a part of this. Like I don't think I've been. I've done a couple crossovers, but definitely nothing this size. So I'm excited to see what they what they do with everybody's characters. Yeah, I mean that's a, it's you know I'm, I'm glad we have talented writers involved because it's a you know that's a hard thing to be able to juggle all those characters. I mean I know just juggling the character my own characters and having all the you know all their personalities in my head you know and trying to get that down on paper is how difficult that is. So I can't imagine having to you know take other people's characters, put that in your own head, and be able to split it out. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. Yeah, now, when, you're, when you're writing for your books, do you ever collaborate with other people and show people your work and say, "Hey, can you read this over?" Or yeah, I actually, I um, my uh, I have a friend, uh, Holly Glazen, and she works as my editor, so she goes over everything I do, you know, my scripts, and then she goes over the, you know, the 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 comics themselves. So yeah, I work with her um, for Sisters of Power. I'm writing with a guy named John Crosby. Uh, we wrote the first issue together, but it's um, it's one of those books. It's about an all women's detective agency on Earth's rebellious moon. So it's an all women's book. So I, I, I know I was writing it myself, and I was like, oh well, I need a partner, and I got John. But then I was like, we wrote the first ep- issue, and it, it turned out well, and it's available now on my website. But um, when the second issue came along, I decided that I wanted to step away and get a, a woman art, a woman writer. So a friend of mine, Isis Climbs, out of Atlanta. She um, uh, came on as John's writing partner for I- issue two, which we haven't produced yet, but I will be running a Kickstarter at some point to uh, do issue two of the Sisters of Power. Okay. Who is that? Who's that? Uh, the Facebook. I need to know who that is, the Facebook user, because we, we had a conversation about that earlier. And uh, I want to get a poll started on on should should Kyron bring back the mustache or not. Ah, ah. <laughs> Put that in the com- put that put a poll in the comments, Kyron. Should Kyron bring the mustache back? Or how long? Not? How long have you had the mustache off? Is this is this a new thing? Just this week. Oh, <laughs> Brad, it's Brad. See, I knew somebody was gonna say something, Kyron, because it was the first thing I when when I turned on the computer and I logged in, I was <laughs> like, "Why did you shave? What is that? Why did you do that?" <laughs> not that it doesn't look good. It looks good. It's just it just looks different. So uh, I hate I, you so much. So. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna take some time for me to get used to. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, right. he wanted that baby face show, and he had, you know, he was trying to cough a couple of years. Yeah. Had to do it. Had to do it. I might. <laughs> I might I'm, nah, I know I look terrible without. Yeah, face. I, I, you know, I, I hate clean shaven Andre, so I, yeah, I, you know, I, I can't do it. I can't I do it either. I can't do it either, Danny. I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. I think the last I, time I shaved, I think my fiftieth birthday, I ended up shaving completely, and I went to work, and people at work were like, "You look like Andre's son." 
So, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a lot of a lot of uh, grays in my in my mustache and stuff. But my oh wife, yeah, my wife is a is a professional hairstylist. She's a cosmetologist, and she won't. She's like, I don't know. I like the gray. I don't want you to dye it. I don't want you yeah know, any of that stuff. I'm like, come on, let me do something to it. <laughs> But, you know, yeah, I, like, just, I just decided to embrace it. You know, it, it started yeah. and now it's gotten it's t- taken off like wildfire on my face. So it's in my yeah, hair right. now, you know, so it's just, this, right. <laughs> you know, like I say, though, often, you know, it's better than the alternative. You know what I mean? It's right, better, right, right, rather right. get gray than not be here. You know, so. that's right. That's very true. Very true. Um, man, I love it. I love it. So we're talking about um, the Epiphany engine. Um, I know they shared a bunch of the the, the family, the central family that's going to be involved. And then um, the the antagonist also. So um, we're we're going to be having some more interviews lined up. Uh, I see Advent Comics is in the uh, in the, oh, yeah, in the yeah. And, and, and Tony will be able to give you the the real deal details deeper than you know than I do because I'm not you know I'm not yeah. I'm I'm actually just a, a, a contributor, so I'm not involved in the, the writing of it at all. So that's what we need to get on here. We need to get we need to get Tony on here at, uh, eventually. Tony's yeah, too busy to be with us. We're... Tony's too, yeah, Tony's too busy. I know. I mean, he's a firefighter, and you know. Oh no, he just he just retired. Well, he retired. Now, right? he retired. That's true. That's time. true. Yeah, he might have some time, so we'll, we'll figure <laughs> it out. We'll get it, we'll get it done. All right, um, I put it. I put a link in the comics if you guys want actually want to vote. If I should bring back the mustache, <laughs> that's it. Mustache poll. <laughs> I'm gonna go vote right now. You know what my vote is? Yeah, I'm no. clicking on it too. Wait a second. Let me click on that. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. Um. Uh, in the meantime, in the meantime, the um, so um, crowdfunding. We yeah. we we talk about crowdfunding a lot on here. Um, we we recently, you know, discussed other crowdfunding sites. You know, because Kickstarter is is kind of up and down. You know, Kickstarter yeah, is oh, definitely it's a yeah. great. It's a great, you know, um, platform. It's it's you know amazing that they created something like that. But it's not easy. Um, to get support on there if you don't, you know, already have an audience right. baked in sometime. So what has been some of your um, some of your um, experiences with, with crowdfunding? Are you strictly Kickstarter? Are you thinking about doing Zoop, uh, Indiegogo, things like that? Or is it uh, what do you what do you think? Well, in the past, I've been strictly Kickstarter. I, mm-hmm. I haven't used Indiegogo or any other any other sites. I've been uh, about 50 percent successful with Kickstarter. I've had some, you know, some projects that were that have done. I think I've uh, tried to do seven Kickstarters. I've had four that fulfilled. Okay. Um, and I've never asked for a lot. You know, I think the most I needed was like three thousand um, dollars. Mm. I do have a property called Hollywood Offenders, which I wrote with a, a friend of mine, David Lyle Johnson. And uh, mm. it's a lot of fun. It's about um, um, Hollywood Boulevard being a Game of Thrones situation where all the different factions like the cosplayers battle the uh, we instead of Scientologists, we have them as the cosmetologists and they're trying to do makeovers for people. And oh, so it's wow. just it's this whole weird fantasy world. So we tried to raise money for that and that actually failed. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, that's one of the books. That's one of the books I'm most disappointed that I didn't get to make because mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's I mean, it's I think if once we get to produce, I think it, you know, talk about being able to sell to Hollywood. I think it's a built. Yes, you know, it's, it's a built in thing. You know, you know, look. You know, in, in L.A. and Hollywood, it's such navel gazing. You know what people mean? So if you if you write a script about the town or you write a script about acting or writing or something, you're going to get somebody like, oh, that's really you know, that's really good. You know, oh, well, that's really interesting. So, you know, you can play to those tropes if you'd like. Um, but like so like so Hollywood Offenders, the book that didn't uh, didn't form, um, didn't fulfill uh, Bovine League number two, which I was disappointed in, didn't fulfill. I'm, I'm working on and paying the artist uh, Christian Alaminos out of pocket right now. But I wanted mm-hmm. to raise you know, crowdfunding funds to get it get it finished, but I just didn't get, get to the finish line. Um, so I've had you know successful ones and I've had failed ones. I think we're going to do um, Indiegogo and try to do um, uh, just raise money for uh, um, Hollywood offenders that way. Um, other than that, no, most, you know, if I can't raise it on if I can't raise it on crowdfunding, I just look to my own pockets then, you know, yeah. um, I was and I was just about to ask. I had somebody asking on TikTok here, Big Roy. He said, "If you if you try Kickstart or you try Kickstarter and it doesn't work, what's the next step?" And just like you said, a lot of times it's coming out of your own pocket. Yeah, you know, get it done or trying to trying to build an audience with one, or yeah, I mean, maybe maybe you decide to move, you know, to another project. Another exactly. a lot of people, a lot of ideas, you know. One. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, most most creative people have a you know more than one idea. You know, mm-hmm. we have we have tons of ideas, and we're able to you know come up with something different if something doesn't work in the in the, in the short run. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I you know like I've I've never directed a film. 
you know, I've, I made a bad web series. So you can go to YouTube and look it up. It's called The Psychedelic Detective. I only did one a, one episode, but mm. it's, you know, I, I, I directed, I shot it, I wrote it, I produced it, I did everything involved with it. And it's, it's not very good. It's supposed to be a comedy, but I obviously don't have a good sense of humor because it's not very oh, wow. funny. But I am. Um, I that could I always, be funny in itself, though. That could be. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but I always, I have, um, I have one idea that I, that I think I want to direct as a feature. You know, I like, mm. you know, like, um, I much like um, um, Charles Lawton with Night of the Hunter. Who, Charles Lawton was a, was an actor who directed one film, Night of the Hunter, back in the fifties. I think mm. I have one good film in me, and um, I'm a big fan of like um, uh, movies of of, uh, of um, coming of age movies. Um, mm -hmm. of teenagers, um, you know, set in one day. So we had like American Graffiti or uh, Dazed and Confused or um, to a lesser extent, Do the Right Thing. These stories that are set within you know, one area in one day. So um, uh, mine is, um, I've seen many, you know, I've seen these stories about, um, you know, young white kids in the, in, the, in the country, you know, growing up or in the suburbs growing up. And I've seen stories about black kids in the city growing up or in the suburbs growing up. But I grew up in a small, predominantly white town. And I'd, I've never seen a story about black kids in that environment. So I'm writing a story called Perfect Beat. And um, my idea, much like George Lucas with American Graffiti, I want to do, a mu I love musicals. So I'm, it's kind of a musical without the singing. So I want to have a lot of music from that era. Um, but it's something I, I want to direct. I've already got producers. I'm already talking to producers. I'm in the middle of writing the script. And um, it's, But it's one thing that I'd, I'd finally like to direct, um, you know, a coming of age story about young black kids in a small town. Okay. I, okay. I love it. Yeah, I, 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 like we said, I've never seen it. You know, it's something I've never seen. And it's something I know a lot of people will have that experience. Kyron is so good, man. He got the link. He said he's going to pull it up. put it right. I there. already had it because I did see it on the website for Psychedelic okay. Detective. I put in the link. Um, I was going to ask you about that because I noticed that there was a lot of names of other series called Psychedel Psychedelic Detective. I found out there was an MTV series. Yeah, please, it used to be on the 90s. Like, I didn't know it until I wrote, you know, until I did this and called a Psychedelic Detective. Someone was like, yeah, that was on a, what was it called? They MTV had the thing, what was it called? Apex? No, it was something they did yeah. late night. It was their animated series. Block animated the areas, down. yeah, yeah. And they they had a series called Psychedelic Detective on that too. Yeah, so um, I was, when, before we got in there, I was like, are they related in any way? But after no. looking into it, they're not, unfortunately. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. I think that's that's another great thing about creators. Like you can have a similar idea or you know a similar name for for something else and be a completely different right. you know, story. Um, that's I, this is a little off top off topic, but uh, I was listening to Neil deGrasse Tyson. He was talking okay. about how how unique we all are as humans. Like the just the the statistics of your genetic sequence and how you literally are the could only be you you know what i'm saying right, you, right, can only yeah. be you but then on top of that you add your experiences the experiences mm -hmm. that you have that make that you know affect who you grow up to be and you know here we go like you may have seen one thing because of who you are and where you were born to and the family you may have seen things and you know um experience them in a certain way to affect your outlook on the world so now you're the only one who can create this one thing right so right it's it's amazing to me. Yeah, I say I I I I stress that when I talk to classes, I try to tell people, I try to tell kids, like, look, you you're the only one that can tell your story, you mm -hmm. know, or tell that story, or tell it in that way. You know, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I know, you know, for me, when I came out of film, I went to film school, and when I came out of film school, I was, you know, I had this, you know, you come out of art school or film school, and you have a different idea of the world a little bit, and I had this whole idea that I had to find an idea that no one's ever seen before. You know what I mean? Like uh, to be creative, I have to do something that no one's ever seen and you know, do it that way. And realistically, that's not true. You know, mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, it's like when I talk to class, like you take a simple story, like girl meets girl, girl loses girl, girl gets girl. You can tell that story in a drama, a musical, a Western, a mm -hmm. sci-fi, a detective. Mm -hmm. not. You can tell that simple story in many genres. And the thing is, tell the story in a unique way. I mean, you know, you look at a story like you look at something like um, when Quentin Tarantino came on with Pulp Fiction and people are like, oh, it's so unique. It's not really that unique of a story. It's just told in an interesting way. Right. Right. You know, and, 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 and that's I think that's the key of being able, you know, being creative is being able to put your spin on these on kind of universal stories. You know, um, it, it's 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 difficult to come up with something no one's ever seen before. Yeah. You know, it's that's just a difficult thing, and uh, and it goes and it goes back to what you were talking about. You know, all of us being, um, you know, individuals of who we are. On that same token, um, what I've learned over over my lifetime is everybody, everyone, know, you're a different person. Everybody you meet, 
You know what I mean? So everyone knows you in a different way. Like I, like I, I, I know Chiron because we were on a panel together in Sacramento, and then I saw him at Black Comics Day in, in February. And Danny, I've seen your name aware, but I don't, that's the relationships I have with you guys. You know what right. I mean? So I see you in this way, but someone else knows you, you know, your mother obviously knows you a different way. Right. You know? right. So right. it's one of those things I think to keep in mind that when you're creating, it's you, you, like you said, it's only you can tell that story. You only you can tell that story you're telling. Yeah. Very nice. I definitely couldn't tell Bovine League. Like that's, that's <laughs> one that I was, when well, you're talking about like stories you've never seen before, Bovine League is pretty pretty darn unique though oh, yeah. <laughs> but you also talk about the bovine like it's kind of aping like marvel comics too so instead of the infinity gauntlet and the and right. the um, and the finny gems they're going after the cosmic utter and the four teats of matter right. so you know it, it it allows you to you know play those kind of puns and to, you know do i mean it's I, I can't tell you guys how much fun it is to write that book you know i know and you know, like you know because I, I my 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 um my uh story arc goes over six issues so I, you know, I've got the plot, I've got it plotted out the whole way. And of course, you know, through life, I change things you know, through, as life comes or whatever, but you know, I'm, I'm just thrilled to write that book. So when can we expect issue two to come out? Now you said we had some, some issues with Kickstarter, but when can yeah. we expect issue two to come out? So issue two, um, if I can get myself together, I think it should be out by Black Comics Day next February. So, okay. um, you know, yeah, I have said like, he's going to be there next February too. Oh, well, oh, good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good. That'll be yeah. awesome. I'm trying to force it. Yeah. It's a great Stay show. Stay it into here. existence and it will happen, right? Exactly. You know, it's a great me, show. I, I really love it. I, I, that's one show that I would absolutely fly, fly out there to do. But, you know, I I, just, I usually stick to the to the East Coast shows because yeah. well, I don't have know, to go on the plane. But, I, envy, I envy you East Coast creators because there's so much stuff so close together. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, yeah. Many, so many shows you can easily draw. I mean, I'm from the East Coast originally, so I know, you know, so many. I mean, you can get, you know, go from New York to Boston to, to Atlanta. You know, and and then on the West Coast, that's just being in California. That's just you know, being yep. in California. Me and Kyra talk about that all the time. I can I can literally drive all the way down to Florida to to Disney World in the time it takes him to to just yep. stay in state. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Really I mean, and, that, and that's one of the harder things about being a being a comic creator here because it's like you know, it's like you know, I'd love to come up to San Jose to do the show to do a show, but it's like. I got to go the whole way to San Jose, you know, that's, it, you know, that's a long a drive way. from where you are. That's a drive. Exactly. Or even up to Sacramento, you know, that's what five hours for me. You know, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a hike, you know, just to come up. I can, I can go through two States in the, in five hours. Literally. I, I can get, I can be to uh, Baltimore. I could be, yeah, I could, I can get to Baltimore in five hours from where I am. And, and you know, it's crazy. I drove for five hours. I don't think I hit the grapevine. Yeah. I don't think you would either. <laughs> yeah. no, I, think, I think you would just about hit the grapevine. Yeah. Just about that. Yeah. And yeah. you'll, be in, you'll be in Central California all that time. And trust yeah. me, I, that's when I started speeding up faster because I do not want to be in that part of California. Oh, I know. It's, <laughs> it's bad. Have you ever driven Have you ever driven north of the five out of L.A. and go go through where they call Kalshowitz, that um that area where there's nothing but cattle? So yes. Like, oh, my God. It's, I, it's just horrible. Uh, uh, Danny, it's, it's, you see it coming. You can see the flatulence in the air. Yeah. It, wow. the, 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 the sky just turns brown yeah and it's like what the hell the first time i ever went by i literally had to stop my car and get out and take photographs because i've never seen that many cattle in one place yeah all this like, just field of just cows just everywhere you look i mean for and like a smell. mile i mean it's for miles it's 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 insane you know that's crazy they call it cowshowitz so Kalshowitz. <laughs> literally cowshowitz i love yeah. it Definitely got to put that in, in the bovine league. Definitely. Oh, yeah, no, there's definitely that. You know, a mad cow takes a, you know, the mad cow disease has a place in the bovine league, too. So, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, since we're, since we broached the subject, uh, let's go ahead and do quick takes, which is my favorite part of the show. All right. Um, if you haven't watched the show before, quick takes is a rapid QA section where we uh, grill our guests on their deepest, darkest secrets that we've discovered on the web. So, Kyron, if you're ready, let's do it. All right, so uh, brother Andre, we're gonna give you 45 seconds each. So we got five questions, and, we, and you got 45 seconds each to answer them. Okay. Okay. Um, the first question you already addressed, so I'm just gonna let, give you 45 seconds to get into the cosmic utter and the four teats of matter. How did you come up with that, and exactly? What is it? Okay, so the cosmic utter and the four teats of matter are um, a a, um, a powerful um, object that was supposedly created in the and in the prelapsarian period by one of the mad cow guys at at Humla. At Humla is the uh, the uh, Norse cow god. 
So she created this cosmic utterance, Four Teats of Matter, to control reality. But the other cow gods decided that it was too much power and that they were going to take it from her and spread the teats of, uh, to the, the teats of matter around the world and uh, move the cosmic utterance somewhere that, that they cannot be found. So this is thousands of years later, and Nandi, the mad cow god from India, decides he's going to find the, the cosmic utterance, the teats of matter, to control reality. See? I love it. That was a great breakdown right there. <laughs> I, I just love it. I love it. Like the things that you can do in comics is. is just... Oh, and it, I th it's so much fun. People, I, people yeah. don't understand. Like, I mean, that, I think people are limited sometimes what they think about comics and what you can do. But you can yeah. literally do anything. You know, Touch. anything. Any story. Um, okay. Question number two. Um, I, you've been around the game a long time. Like we said, I saw on your Facebook uh, you had taken a picture of um, Sebastian. Um, back in 2009 at a, yes. at a Comic Con or something like that. So you've been around shows a long time. I want to know, you know, as a as a creator and as a you know just a fan of comics, um, do you prefer big shows or small cons, or uh, and in and, and why? Okay, well, as a creator, I've learned to love small shows mm -hmm. um, because people that come to small shows tend to be there to buy. You know, like I've done, like we've done, like you said, we've done. I did San Diego Comic Con. We used to do I had a group called the Antidote Trust. And it was a whole bunch of creators, including Sebastian, when he first started uh, Stranger Comics. And we'd pool our money to go to like the San Diego Comic Con to get a big booth. But, you know, those booths are at the time, they were like five thousand dollars. So there'd be, you know, maybe there'd be like 10 of us in the booth, you know, you know with 500 bucks a piece. And mm -hmm. it, it, you know, you sell at big shows. I'm not going to say you don't sell at big shows, but I sell better at small shows and I tend to like small shows. Um, now, as a as a as a uh, as a customer, I like big shows because I like to be able to see all the exciting things I never see. For sure. One hundred percent. I'm with you on that. I um, to, real quick. I want to say thank you because I found out I during our, our research time with this. I saw the interview you did at um, SDCC where you had Barbara Kiesel yeah. as the host. I didn't realize I've been saying her last name and her husband's last name for the longest time. I know. <laughs> I it's like, like hey. your whole life. Yeah. I was so yeah. excited to be on that panel with her doing that. You know, it's so funny. It's like, you know, it's especially because I've worked in Hollywood a long time. So I've been around a lot of celebrities and stuff. But, you know, the celebrities that impress me are, are people like her. You know, these people where where it's not like, oh, you know, it's a big giant star, but it's someone small. Like I am. Um, for instance, I worked when I was working at the game. I worked at the game show network. I was the tape librarian, so I was in charge of all the different uh, game shows that we had there. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the, we worked with outside storage units where we'd store a bunch of other tapes before we digitized everything. And there was a woman. Her name was Alyssa Sarna. Um, this white woman, and she worked at um, you know, she worked at an outside storage unit. So you know, she's very nice. We were talking one day, and she tells me, "Hey, I was uh, um, I don't know what it was. So Rick James came up, and she goes, I was in Rick James' band.' I was like, "What?" She goes. I was the white girl in Rick James band. I was like, what? And she was like, I forget what song it was. She was the one she said, I heard it too. It's like, I don't know if it's ghetto life or super freak, but there's a line where you hear someone go say what? And like, she's the one that said that. <laughs> so, so I'm like, you know, I'm all impressed. I'm like, wow, you were in Rick James band. You know, that's really impressive to me. So fast forward now, I, that was years ago, fast forward um, about six months ago, or maybe the longer, shorter than that, four months ago, there's a Rick James documentary out. And so I'm watching this documentary and they cut to Alyssa Sarna, this woman I know. And, you know, and, and it's just, she's sitting there saying like, yo, I'd still be Rick James if he was alive and all this stuff. So, you know, I was more impressed meeting her than I was say like, you know, I've been, you know, I've been like the Adam Sandler's beach house to parties and stuff and meeting celebrities that way. And, that, you know, somehow got myself invited to that stuff, which is cool, you know, which is cool. But like I said, I'm more excited about celebrities like Barbara or like this woman, Alyssa. I love it. That's great. I think you get better stories like that too. Like, the, the 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 things that you would never even think of, like somebody saying, "Oh, I'm I was this person who did this spe weirdly specific thing," right? You know, that, that stuck out. But yeah, okay, all right. So question question number three. Okay. Again, as a long time um, uh, cos uh, congor, um, and now as a creator, do you? I would. How can I ask this? Cosplay or fan art? Which mm -hmm. one do you think is more important? Which one do you think is more important to uh, comic books? Huh, that's a good question. You know, I've never really thought about that, you know, on that level. Um, you know, I must say I enjoy cosplay a little better than fan art in the sense that, you know, as, as a non-artist, it, 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 it's hard for it's sometimes it's hard for me to wrap my brain around that artists just don't just don't produce their own books all the time. You know, mm -hmm. 
Like it, I always, it, it's, it's a, as an, and now I, I used to draw, I almost went to art school after high school, but I chickened out with the film school instead, you mm -hmm. know, so that's neither here nor there. But when I draw, even to this day, I draw my own characters. And so it's always weird for me when people draw fan art and they spend all this time creating this art that, I mean, I guess you can sell as fan art, but it's, you know, it's not your IP. So I'd say I, um, cosplay is better for me on that level. Okay. That makes sense. That's a good, that's an interesting perspective. Okay. So, um, question number four. And now, because I know about the, the rich uh, history you have in, in film, I'm going to say in an alternate universe, mm -hmm. if you could not do film or comic, comics, mm -hmm. what would you be doing? Oh, my goodness. What would I be doing? What would I be doing if I couldn't write? Well, I, I if I couldn't do film or comics, and I'd still be writing, I guess, because it's something I always do. So I'd probably try to write, be a novelist or, you know, something like that. Um I don't know what I would do. You know, I've done I've done both film and comics my entire life. That I don't know. I mean, heck, you know, I I I you know I'd be happy working at a car wash. You know, just and being able to meet people. You know, I I mean that's one of the things that you know I um as a writer I I you know I've done a lot of jobs. Like I've got this idea of um doing a TikTok series. Actually, I may start called my mini jobs because I've had I think I've had thirty nine jobs in my life. You know, just they're doing different things, and that doesn't include the temp agencies I've worked at. So. Mm -hmm. You know, I've done so many different things to survive as a yeah, as a being a creative. You know what I mean? Because you know, both as a filmmaker and as a comic book writer, it's not the most lucrative business. Right. Yeah. I love it. I, yeah. I want somebody to come out and say something outrageous about their alternate universe. Be like, I want to be a porn star. Right. <laughs> you know, well, I want to be a garbage person. <laughs> well, I, I, I wouldn't be a porn star. I actually, I actually worked in the porn industry as a cameraman for a little while with a friend of mine, uh, Carlos Bats, who's rest in peace. He was this great fetish photographer, and he got me up. <laughs> He got me involved in working with him. And I'll tell you one thing, that industry, I, I've, I, you know, I've been in a lot of settings, a lot of professional settings, a lot of stuff, but I'm so, I was such a professional in those settings. So I didn't want to look at anything that I wasn't supposed to look at. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, with the blinders on, for sure. Yeah, you know, it's like, I was I, like, hey, what? what? I don't want to, I don't <laughs> And you know, it's what you know, and it's like you know, much like much like if you work in the um, the sausage industry, you know, you see how the sausage is made. So it's like you know, now I know how the stuff is made. So it's not you know, it's like ah, oh, I can't, I know what's going on behind the scenes. You know, I know there's you know, twelve people just standing there. You know, so. right, right, <laughs> terrible. Okay, all right. So last but not least, uh, we always end end our quick takes with a with a random top five um, specific to our guests. Okay. Um, since, since you have the bovine league, I know you're you're a fan of sports. Also, I yes. want to know just off the top of your head, five to one. What are the top five sports? The t my top five sports, five your to one. Five, five five to one. one. All right. Um, uh, let's see. Track and field five. Okay. Um, yes, I ran track in college, so that's that's yeah, something. Yeah. You know, track and field five. Guys, this is a tough question. Uh, baseball four. Um, gosh. I know what's going to be number one. I already know. Yeah. Uh, what's three? <laughs> Gosh, uh, three. I, you know what I? Well, what do I enjoy watching? I guess uh, college basketball is three. Okay. Um, pro basketball is two, and NFL is, four, is one. one. And I, okay. and, well, and I, you know, and maybe I have to throw college football in there because that's something too. I was um, my I'm a big Notre Dame fan because my mom, I was raised Catholic, and my mm -hmm. mom sat me when I was a little kid. My mom sat me in front of the TV and said, "This is this this is your team." So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've always been that way, and I became a Raiders fan. Actually, I grew up on the East Coast, but um, I um, I um, name to the Raiders. That's a yeah. It's, it's so funny though. So I grew up with everyone. Was, people were Colts fans, or Eagles fans, or Redskins fans. Mm -hmm. But um, it was week three. I'm gonna say how old I am here. But it was week three of the 1973 season, and mm -hmm. I, I was a little kid, and I had been a, a Dolphins fan because they had won the Super Bowl the previous couple of years. You know, when you're a little kid, you're like, oh, Dolphins. But um, week three of the 1973 season, I turned the TV on and no one was around. It was me by myself. I watched the first football game I ever watched on my own. And it was the Oakland Raiders versus the Miami Dolphins. Wow. And the Oakland Raiders broke the Miami Dolphins winning streak. And I, mm -hmm. as a kid, I was like seven years old. I was like, I like that team now. Like, so this is, this is it. This is my team. <laughs> my team. You know, so I've been a Raiders fan for, geez, 50 years now. So, oh, I love it. Okay. Love it. Awesome. Long suffering. Hey, well, hey, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Well, we, we just talked about Kyron and his Kings at the beginning of the show. So. Um, I, I'm I'm sorry, Kyron. You know, you know, I, I you know I have to go with I have to go with Phil Jackson and call you guys a, a cow town. So, <laughs> wow. I, all right, so Andre will not be back on our show at all. <laughs> Gee, well, it was nice having you, Andre. We'll not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> I'm gonna tell Keith to not put me by you next right time. next year. Exactly. Geez, sorry about that, man. Yeah. Dang. No, no, you know it's so funny. I actually lived up in uh, Sacramento for about eight months there. I really enjoyed my time up there. It was, it was, it was. It's a nice city, actually. So I can't say it. Full of trees. The right, yeah. most trees in any city I've ever been in. Yeah, we actually had the most trees per square foot or something like that from any city in the world. Yeah, I imagine. I imagine. Yeah, it, it was. It was quite tree filled. Yes, that's 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 good. I didn't I I never like looked at pictures of Sacramento, but that's not what I imagined. I imagine like rich tapestries of like hillside uh, <laughs> uh, buildings. Like I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking of. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Andre, thanks thanks for doing that. Thanks, for Danny. Us. I appreciate it. Kyron, thank you. No, all yeah. right. Well, we want to make sure that people check you out, Andre, and. And uh, you know, follow you. So yeah, you, go to my, you can find all my comics at my website, which would be herounlimited.com. So H I R O unlimited.com. All right. And what about social media? Where can people check you out? You can there? find me um everything. I'm at social media at redskew. So R E D S K E W across social media. I think Instagram's the only one that's different, it's at red underscore skew. But TikTok, right. everything else is at red skew. Okay. All right. Danny, where can people check you out? Well, you know, if you want to find me or Ace Blade, the best place to go is our website, fourthwallpros.com. And if you want to find me on social media, the best place to look is at the Ace Blade on all social media platforms. Kyra, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at touristcomics.com. Check out all my books uh, there. You can also find me at all social media platforms, including TikTok now, which I don't know why I got banned for that, but I'm back on there. Uh, at t- at Taurus Comics. <laughs> And this yeah, is first TikTok, I never know why. I, mean, I never know why stuff happens on TikTok. You got blocked for twelve hours, and it was back on. <laughs> Seriously, I'm like, what? What did I do? Yeah, what did I, I say? Yeah, what did I say? What I... At least and tell I me what people... I did wrong before you banned me. Right, right. I see people saying crazy shit on there. You know, where I'm like, why aren't they banned? Yeah. Right. yeah. 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 Uh, but if this is your first time checking out our podcast, you can go to our website, foretellspodcast.com. You can go and listen to our previous episodes. You can buy some merchandise. Uh, you can check out what's coming up for us. But definitely join us next week where we're going to have Shandar Wilson of Shockwave Comics on. We're talking about everything he is producing. And I have a feeling he's part of Epiphany and Jen also. So we'll try to get some information from him also. I've seen some good art from him too. So Yeah, I was going to yes. say, that's some good art there. Uh, But until next time, everybody, sayonara, goodbye, and please take care of yourselves.